Hey guys, it's Richard from WebNature. In this video I want to talk about function overloading in TypeScript. There are many videos out there which talk about it, but I feel like none of them really explain why you would want to overload one of your functions in the first place. So that's what I want to focus on in this video. First of all, what is function overloading? I would say function overloading is just narrowing down the call signature of your function. Well, I want to compare this to something that may be easier to understand for most of you. If you have a class, you can have a base class. And let's say this base class has an ID, which can be a number or a string. So what you could do now, because this is not very nice to have a property which doesn't have a definite type. So what you could do is you could make another class, call it number base, and extend this base class. And in here you could define your ID to be a number. You haven't actually added any new features to your application. You have simply narrowed down the type of your base class to make it better and easier to use in any kind of context, because now you don't have to check for the type of this ID when you want to work with it. Function overloading really is a very similar thing. So if you have a function, um, each function has a specific call signature. When you have a function like this and you could output hi, plus the argument. Each function has arguments or parameters and a return type. The return type is simply what it will return. In this case, this is a string and we can define this by putting the two dots after your parameters. Also, TypeScript wants us to type our parameters, which in this case also have to be a string. So now we have this very basic typed function. If we wanted to overload it, how would we do it? One thing to keep in mind whenever you want to overload something is that you have only one implementation no matter what. What is the implementation? It's basically what is inside these brackets here. Now overloading, you are not implementing your function again. You are simply narrowing down the call signature of your function. In this case, there's nothing to narrow because our call signature is definite. Our argument is always a string and it always returns a string. There's no point in overloading this function because we would get the same result. So let me give you an example of a function where it would be really useful to overload it. Let's say it's called get ID. What this function will do for us, it will give us IDs. And let's say this ID which we want is going to be a number. For numbers, you could go ahead and return a math random. Now this is obviously not good to do. You do not want to create random IDs using math random, but this is just an example. So this function like this is okay. You wouldn't have to change anything about it. But what if we want to change the functionality of this function to give us the ability to create multiple IDs at once? If we do that, we will have an optional quantity parameter, which is also a number. Now, however, the function signature will change when we provide a quantity because we will no longer get a number, we will get an array of numbers or a number array. Well, now we have to change it a little bit. If no quantity is defined, we will return math random. That's because if they don't provide a quantity, we will just give back one ID. In the other case where a quantity is defined, we want to make a for loop. Let's say i equals one, as long as i is less than the quantity and it will increase with each loop. And then we would need some array. And in here we would say array push and then in the end return the array. So let's test this function real quick. Oh, <laughs> uh, why did I write it like this? It's kind of weird. And as you can see, the function works. So if we provide no arguments, we will get just a number. If we provide a number, we will get an array with that length. So as you will see here now, our function signature is not definite because the problem is with this function, the return type is not clear. With a function like this, usually we're gonna assign this ID to some kind of property which expects a number. So let's say we have a number which expects a number and now if we want to assign an id this will give an error because type of this is number or number array and in this case 
function overloading can actually really help us. Now remember, we are not changing the implementation of this function, this stays the same. All we're providing now will be TypeScript expressions that will not make it into JavaScript. So if I want to overload this function now, I could specify that if this is called without a parameter, I will get a number, and if this is called with a parameter, I will get a number array. So how would I do that? I would make a function with the same name. Now I would leave it without parameters, and I could say that in this case, it will return a number. Now notice that if I write this, I will get an error which says a duplicate function implementation. Well, that's because overloading your function doesn't change anything about the implementation. So each of your function overloads, aka each of these lines, need to be compatible with your actual function signature. So you cannot go and say like, oh, I'm gonna make another function which takes another argument and this is a string. That's not gonna work and it gives us the error. This overload signature is not compatible with its implementation signature. And the reason is because at no point in the actual actual implementation of this function, did we say that parameter can be a string. Let's overload this function to make it real nice to use, right? So we already clarified here that if it's not called with any parameter, we will get a number. So we can also clarify now that if it's called with a parameter, notice now that in this case, it's not an optional parameter, but now we can say for sure that this will be a number array. Now this actually works because now the correct type from this function called without any parameters is a number and that comes from this overload and now I can assign it to this variable without any problem. I hope this shows you why functional overloading is useful and what it does. It doesn't change anything about your function itself it simply makes your function easier and better to use. And the result of this is that you can make more generic functions and you have to write fewer functions. And in the end of the day, you have to write less code, which is just as powerful because you could do the same thing if you wrote two functions. So just to show you what function overloading can do, because here's the thing, uh, what if I call get ID zero? So as you can see, we still get one ID. And I would say this is not really good behavior because honestly, if you're calling get ID with a quantity of zero, there must be a problem in your application. Because why would you do that on purpose? Like get, give me zero IDs. What I would do here is, um, first of all, I would check if the quantity is zero, I would throw an error, quantity cannot be zero. So now when we call get ID zero, this will throw an error. And now actually we can go ahead and specify this in our overloads as well. We can say a function get ID, the quantity will be zero and the return type here will be never. Never is kind of a special case, meaning it will never return. And now this is gonna prevent people from accidentally calling get ID with a number that is zero. Actually, as you can see, if we put zero here and we put never as the type, it will not give an error because never means that this function will never return. I don't really know why this is okay for the transpiler, but if you put void here, you will see this will give an error because now the return type is void. And you can see also that void is compatible with this signature, even though we didn't explicitly state that this function could return void here. Also, as you can see, we're on TypeScript 4.1 and there are some new TypeScript features, I think since 4.0, which basically makes tuples a stronger attribute. Could go further here and you could say, maybe you know that oftentimes you're gonna try to get four IDs at once, right? So you could say quantity here is four and now you could clarify that you are going to get an array with the length 4 here, which are all going to be numbered. I hope this example has shown you guys what function overloading is and why you would want to do it. And also you can see that function overloading is completely optional and it's really up to you how far you take it. Anyways, hope you guys learned something and see you next time.